this phenomena here in Clenthley that people love being out and about drinking coffee. Mm. And what I've noticed living here mm. is that when you think of cafe culture, well, where do we think of first of all? Oh, somewhere hot, mainland Europe. Yeah. Uh, relaxing, watching everything go by. Mm. So we want to make a film about this. Okay. Uh, explore this co cafe culture. Mm. Talk to some of the characters who are out in, yes. in Clarethley. Well, what would you think? There certainly are some characters. Well, I think we'll take our cue from Mark Paolo and in this weather, let's go have a hot cup of coffee. Let's go. <laughs> it's a nice, bright, sunny spring day. And we're just going to have a look round. We're going to go and visit a few cafes as well. Come along with us and have a look. Well, we're here at Clenethley House, which is one of the historic landmarks of our town. I hear they've got a really fantastic cafe here, so I'm going in there just to check it out. It's a glorious restoration of this magnificent townhouse, originally built in 1715 and family home of the Stepneys. There's a really interesting mixture of Welsh and Italian going on here. Um, somebody told me the coffee's really good as well. So we're going to pop in there and have a kind of chat with the staff here. Oh, thanks, Sam. Um, how long have you been here? Uh, myself, I started last June, so about 11 months now. Here we are in Clenethley Market, it's the hub of our town here. It's a busy Saturday lunchtime. Uh, behind me is Gegenwach, uh, which in Welsh means small kitchen. Uh, you can see it's really, really busy there at the moment, which is great. Um, I'm going to pop over there now and um, see if I can grab myself a coffee. Richard, how long have you been here? I've uh, been in the market now for about 15 years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not just a cafe, it becomes um, a social event for people. And you also become friends with the people as well. It's not just coming in for a cup of tea and a coffee and a meal and they're gone. It's, it's a chit chat. So, you know, they become your friends as well as customers. It's very friendly. They feel at ease. And uh, I like the cake and the cappuccini. Yeah, wonderful. Do you get lots of regulars coming in? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mornings mostly. Drinkers. As you see, we have the benches outside where. Yeah, the same, you do see the same faces every morning. And... When you see people every day, they really do become a part of your family almost because you see them more than your family, you see them more than your partner, your mother, you know, you've got that daily bond with them and if for some reason one of them don't tune up that day, then you're worried about where they might be for their, their coffee for that day. This cafe is becoming part of our hub in the town here in Clackley. He said it's all about friendship really. So um, maybe that's something we've learnt today from this particular cafe. What would you say is the most popular coffee that you serve? What do people ask for? Yeah, flat white, milky coffee. I would say a latte is definitely the most popular. I think it's probably one of the easiest ones to pronounce as well. Is so um, latte was everybody goes for, yeah. We have this bit of a joke, we call it Latte Thursday. Um, everybody, for whatever reason, um, Thursday is the old market day in town. So we sell a lot of latte on a Thursday, and the rest of the week, it bobs between the cappuccino, um, the odd americano, a couple of espressos along the way for those that, you know, are feeling a little jaded. The cappuccino is stronger. Yeah. You know? So, uh, it's like espresso, forget that. Yeah, it's too, too strong. It's tough fun, you got mostly cappuccinos and lattes are the most popular, most well known coffees, probably. But yeah, those two are certainly the biggest sellers we have. Latte, uh, uh, milky coffee, yeah. that's, the, that's the number one seller. What's the most popular coffee that you serve here? Uh, definitely our latte. 100%. You know, we've all been barista trained so that we can produce high qualities and it is all about the way that we're making it. This afternoon we're here in the Mayor's Chamber with Councillor Bill Thomas, who's currently the Mayor of Clackley. Nice, nice to, and, and thank you very much for agreeing to be in our film. Oh, you're welcome. Um, now, I think what we do maybe start with um, you know, your wife's family who come from Italy and they've got a great connection with the cafes in Clenethley. Yes, my, my father-in-law came here in 1955. Um, the cafe culture has changed in, in Clenethley to what it used to be. There, there used to be a number of um, uh, Italian cafes and you'd smell that um, 
nice coffee smell. You know. Uh, my my uh, parents are from uh, Sicily, mm -hmm. uh, little town called Piazza Marina. My father left uh, university, and there was no work there in Piazza Marina. And they were advertising for tool makers mm -hmm. uh, in uh, in Britain. And my father ended up in Wales. 1966, they took over this coffee. Yeah. So what, what was it like in those days? Uh, my parents started here uh, uh, very busy. Six o'clock in the morning till ten at night. Well, I, I, I can recall um, a lot of the Italian countries that were here years ago. You could start walking from where I lived, which was in Swansea Road, and um, you'd walk down into Upper Park Street, there was an Italian uh, coffee there and you know you, you get that coffee smell and you'd have the um, the Italian influence especially my father-in-law was there you could go down then station roads and you had uh, another place called Florini's and um, there was another ca another Italian coffee there and, and they were all Italian and Italian culture so the the Italian influences died off a little bit this coffee before uh, before my father took over was Perigos. And you're one of the last ones left here now. Yeah, <laughs> we are the last. The last. We are the last, yeah. Where do you get your coffee from? I found this gentleman up called Marillo, <laughs> who's Italian, and he delivers it to me, and it's very, very good Italian coffee. Very popular, actually. I think it suits the, the, the Flanetti taste. Flanetti taste bits are very sort of finely honed, might I say, and they don't like to anything too drastic. They like something fairly mellow, and the Italian coffee does suit them. It, ca it uh, comes from, uh, well, obviously it comes from Italy. Yeah. Uh, I deal with uh, Chiappa. Mm -hmm. Uh, where do you source the coffee from? Um, to be honest, it's, uh, most of my stuff comes from Casa Tawil in Kamada. Uh, and the, the rest, like, there's a local Asda here, yeah? so anything fresh we need any day, every day, we just pop up there. I can see on the back here, um, it says a Celtic Italian company. So this is a great way of um, fusing together the Italian and the Welsh here. Yeah. So we've got a great tasting Italian coffee. Uh, with the Welsh Dragon sitting on the back of the pack. Perfect, isn't it? We get it from Ferrari's Coffee, which is a um, Welsh-based firm. They come from Cardiff, and they deliver it straight to us then. Mm. That's lovely. So I'm going to have a word with the owner here, Anand, and just find out where they're getting this coffee from. But it's a really lovely cup of coffee here. The coffee that we use here is uh, an Indian blend. It's called Indian Monsoon Malabar. So we have a company uh, in Bristol that supplies to us. That's, uh, it's uh, basically uh, called the Nairobi Coffee and Tea Company. So that's the company basically that uh, we deal with getting our coffee. And uh, they do source it from India, from Africa, from you know various parts of the world. So we can get the best blend. And uh, we have a lot of uh, coffee estates in Coorg, in Karnataka from the state where I'm from. And we also have uh, other places like Assam, Darjeeling, and everything, yeah. and in Kerala as well. So that's the uh, Malabar uh, range from where we are getting it. Do you ever sell fair trade coffee? We have on occasions, yes, and I'll be looking to probably introduce some more as the time goes on. But coffee is a very personal, and I think people really get used to the taste. And they, when well, if you put something new in, they all go, "Hey, what's the matter with the coffee?" Nothing about it; it's just a bit different. I'm not sure if any of our coffees are fair trade. I know some of our stalls are, but they're more along the clothing line, and they support the fair trade business. I'm not quite sure on the coffees. I'll have to check that out actually. The fair trade event here, highlighting some of the produce that comes from around the world from fair trace producers. Um, we've been lucky enough to speak to Nimrod who's here as well, the Ugandan fair trade coffee producer. With the fair trade, with the extra money in the farmer's pocket, with the cleaner environment, with the education of their children, I think we are moving, we have, we have, we have, we have started uh, the journey towards uh, economic and social development. It's most important that when we're sat there drinking this brilliant quality coffee that has maybe spent three years maturing into a tree, uh, up to eight months 
uh, turning from a flower into a coffee bean and the very, very intense processes that, that a farmer such as Nimrod goes into to make sure we have the best quality coffee that you possibly can, then we need to make sure that it's fair trade, that it's got that logo on, so that we are able to demonstrate that more of our hard-earned money has gone back to the people who grow it. Do you think it'd be good if we could uh, get Clanetti as a fair trade town? Yeah, I think that would be quite good. We did have um, some um, councillors begin that process off some time ago. Um, and we've still got uh, interest in it uh, and hopefully that um, you know we can do something about that. Tell me some of the characters who come in oh, here. We, we've got a lot of different characters. We have um, some people that are quite timid, quite shy and you like to just bring it out in them and you can always make people smile. You know our little thing is that if people come in and they haven't got a smile on their face then they're leaving with one of ours. You know, because it's, it's just important that people leave here feeling good about themselves. And if, if we can help do that, then it's great. Tell, tell me about some of the people who come to your cafe. Mostly, I would say, 80-85% regular, regular customers. All, know them all by name. Um, they all sort of come back here, so we must be doing something right. Yeah. And when somebody comes, do you know what they're going to order every morning? Yes, there's a good chance. We've got a lot of regular customers here, so can we have a quick chat with some of them? Of course you can. They, they, they'd love to chat with you. Good morning. So good what, morning. What, what's your name? I can't speak yet. Tony. Nice to meet you. Tony. Hi, nice to meet you, Tony. Do you come here every day? Every, every morning. Every morning? What, every morning. What makes it special coming here? We watch in him, some funny as we get here, we all meet here every morning. Gang of us here, roll eight. Yeah. We all meet here. We've got good uh, people behind the counter here, yeah. very friendly. What about any characters? Do you have any characters who come in here? Um, yeah, we get a, you know, a couple of the older gentlemen coming in and they have, uh, as you say, you can have a chat to them, nice and quite friendly gentlemen, and, you know, and some of the ladies. They're really friendly as well. The characters uh, are normally the older generation who, who come here, who know me for the last 40 years, yeah. and we go back to memory lane, the, the older generation. Because yeah. they come here, you know, they live down near the road, on <coughs> Coburg Road, and they can't talk to most of the people because they don't know nothing about the area. Yeah. So they used to come here 40 years ago, 50 years ago, and we just go back on memory lane. You know, do you remember that shop? Do you remember so and so? Mm. And they're the characters. One particular man that comes in, he likes to have a little laugh and a joke with us, and we always wind up and tease him. But I think that's one of the main reasons why he comes in here. I don't think he really likes coffee, to be honest. I watched um, a documentary it's about the older generation and how lonely they can be and sometimes if they come out on their weekly bus trip and they come to town then we can be the only conversation that they have had in two or three weeks you know, or, or weekly so we make sure that we treat everyone exactly the same and, and, have, and, and learn as much about them as, as customers as, as they can about us as staff. So you would know when somebody walks in exactly what coffee they normally have? Um, yeah, I'd like to think so. This man's about to order an Americano. Do, do you recognise when, when somebody comes in, you know what they're going to order? Yeah, with most of our morning people, yes, you do. Yeah, certainly. We have a really great regular gang of um, visitors. We have one group, and I call them my uh, Friday afternoon ladies. So, do you come here often? Yes, for five times a week. Goodness, yes. well, that's, so you nearly live here? Yes, practically, yes. Yeah. What's special about coming here for coffee? Uh, I think the atmosphere, the atmosphere is very, very nice. <laughs> Stuff and lovely and friendly. And, yeah. and the coffee's good. And uh, whenever I come in, there's always somebody that will say, Oh, come on in, Julia, and take a seat down. Well, what's been really interesting talking to some of the people in the cafes is the fact that they say that the people come in, they're, they're, they start off being their customers, and they say they, then they become friends, which is really what part of the cafe culture is all about people coming to their regular cafe place and just building friendships and being part of the community here. How your got this idea of 
making this part of the town centre. Um, yeah. Tell us about some of the pictures that you've got behind you. Well, uh, the ones that we have got here is uh, basically uh, with regards to the town centre and the town ground. And uh, we want to basically uh, bring back those those old memories and you know, how the town used to be and how it is today. The cafe culture here is quite strong, um, and they, they're a strong part of of the market. To be honest, we've got we like to have a lot of food retailing businesses here. We've got a few of them who specialise in breakfasts, so they'll have their their early morning clients. You know, uh, here and now it's been busy at lunchtime. Each of the cafes have got their own little books and their own little regular followings. I noticed, you know, whenever I'm in town, there isn't that much from just by the market up to here. So no. where do most of your customers come from now? Uh, we do get a lot from the theatre and uh, the Odeon Cinema, from the new Eastgate development. So yeah. the building the Eastgate um, development, that's really yeah. benefited your business yeah, really, as well? Yeah, it has really uh, boosted our business, right? Can I have an Americano, please? That's no problem at all. I think the lesson that we can see here for about redevelopment is the fact that this money has been invested in the Eastgate project here and as Sam said it is bringing an extra business um, to the cafe. It's a great way of showing how that development money has been used to enhance the businesses in the town. But the new market is quite vibrant and of course the new shopping centre and there's a few cafes in there uh, that I enjoy going to. Um, but it's it's getting better than, than we've experienced during the late 80s. I believe we drink um, almost as much coffee as the French now, so, you know, it's, it's quite interesting and they say plenty has got its share. Oh, that's nice to see. I just picked up my copy of Clinically Star this week. Lovely article in there on page two, all about cafe culture in Clinically. There's the picture there when we were across the road there at uh, Verve. The other week in the sunshine, uh, the picture when we went into steaming mugs, and there's another one there of when we went to do the interview with Anna at Clanetley House that day. And uh, well, thank you very much to Robert in, in the Clanetley Star there. Well, what we learned from this um, incredible journey, we started out in the winter and it was cold, wet and miserable uh, on this journey, finding out about the cafe culture in Clanetley. And today, as you can see, it's a bright sunny day and, well, We've learnt one thing definitely, that there is a very, very strong cafe culture here in Clanetley. And when we talked to the cafe owners and the people here, what they're saying to us every time was the fact it's all about the characters, the regular people who come in, into town, to the cafes to enjoy a nice cup of coffee. Sometimes it's the only people that they do talk to is us in the cafe and it just brightens up their day a little bit. And I think that's really great that we found that out about our small town here, ex-industrial. Well I think we've got so many coffees because they're good. We can put ourselves up against the Milans, the Turin, the Paris, all these lovely places in the world and say yes this is one of the centres of the cafe culture. Yakida. Yakida. It's not just a cafe, it becomes um, a social event for people and you also become friends with the people as well. I think it suits the, the, the Flanetli taste. Flanetli taste but it's a very sort of finely horned, what to say. You know, our little thing is that if people come in and they haven't got a smile on their face then they're leaving with one of ours. Sort of the atmosphere, the customers are nice, great business to work for. You know. Yeah, <laughs> we are the last. We are the last. We are the last, yeah. Yeah. We are the last cafe. Mostly, I would say, 80-85% regular, regular customers. All, know them all by name. With the fair trade, with the extra money in the farmer's pocket, with the cleaner environment. So that we are able to demonstrate that more of our hard-earned money has gone back to the people who grow it. Um, the cafe culture here is quite strong, and they, they're a strong part of, of the market. There used to be a number of Italian cafes, and you'd smell that um, nice coffee smell. Yeah. 